This is the 747-400 at the Delta Flight Museum. See the size of this thing. And up there, they have cut it out in a way that you can see the layers of the airplane. Later on, me and Burlo will go up there and film it to show you how massive this plane is. I'll see you later. And this is the first. 747-400 to come off the assembly line back in 1988. It flew for Northwest until 2008 and then became part of Delta's fleet during the merger. The plane retired in 2015 uh, and uh, after about eight months at Delta Tech Ops, we uh, moved it into the uh, GEO's head um, uh, parking lot here uh, while we prepared it for exhibition and then it opened up in the spring of 2017. So it's been open just a little over a year. Um, as I said, it was the first 747-400. The first 747s came out in 1970. This was a major upgrade in the mid-1980s. Uh, uh, got a glass cockpit, uh, also extra fuel tank, so it had a, a longer range than the uh, previous 747s. Uh, it became the most popular 747 as far as sales. It sold more than uh, almost equal to the number of 747s that had flown before. There are still 400s flying, um, though they are beginning to. There are uh, a lot of them have retired. No domestic airlines fly the 747 400. There are, there is a 747-8, but they didn't sell very well, but you still see them. Mm -hmm. um, so, but this also had uh, winglets, that was another upgrade too. Yeah. So what we did with the exhibit, kind of similar to the Spirit, we kept the front section as it was, kind of. Uh, we just walked through that, the, the cabin we just walked through that set up uh, as a main cabin with uh, economy seats. Uh, that was actually uh, Delta One. We took out the Delta One um, seats and put in the main cabin so people could experience that. It's also a good setting for filming. Um, but then we still have Delta One up in the nose cabin um, in the front uh, and then upstairs and we can go upstairs. We, uh, we removed the upstairs. This was a galley uh -huh. for the uh, upper deck. We removed that. We just get a view into the back. Not that tall. Um, and then the cockpit is open. Oh, cool. Let's see how small the flight deck is on the 400. So it is uh, it's a very high flight deck as well yeah. off the ground. Yeah. Um, but this, uh, this plane was also um, designed to only have two pilots so mm -hmm. you didn't need the flight engineer anymore mm -hmm. um, though because it's a long it, it flew mostly long haul flights you'd always have probably four pilots yeah was in the and two would be in that rest yeah cool. we took out one jump seat to give people a little mm -hmm. more room but there was an extra no, there was one more jump seat Oh, just, I, I think up. Northwest kept had a 2-2 up here, and this yeah. would have been business class, actually. Right. And then, did they, um, someone have like a lounge area or something? Because I remember Yeah, that. so the original 747s did, and certainly probably some airlines kept that, but most airlines, <laughs> after the first version of the 747s, eliminated the upstairs lounge in favor of more seating. I flew on a plane from Hawaii to Guam so, in the 90s, mm -hmm. and there was a like a little lounge in the front of the plane. Wasn't it 747? In the front of the plane. So the sometimes there'd be yeah. a lounge in the front of yeah, the plane. That, yeah, and that was really cool because everybody, cause everybody smoked back then. Yeah. Yeah. So it was horrible to fly. But right. it was nice to go in the lounge and just kind of have a little room to spread <laughs> That's where you would play cards. Yeah, it was, yeah. It was really cool. Social. Yeah. So the upper deck was, uh, the design, the original design, the reason there was an upper deck was to put the flight deck up so that these planes could be um, transformed into freighters. Right, yeah. Uh, and they could go through the nose. And there were freighters built like that. Um, 
but that was the whole point of the upper deck. It never was for a lounge. It, right. it wasn't designed for a lounge or extra seating. Right. That came after the fact. That was just kind of a bonus, but it was more for, um, uh, eventually they thought all the 747s would become cargo planes. Delta flew this with 376 passengers, okay. 286 main cabin, and the rest split between Delta One and uh, Delta Comfort. Uh, when, so I know when this first flew for Northwest, it would have had the two by two upstairs. Mm -hmm. When it merged from Northwest to Delta, I'm not sure if they were still doing the two by two. We don't we don't know what what it looked like then. Okay. We have more of a sense of what it looked like when it came out as far as seeing. So we took out um, all the seats, obviously, and then a lot of the. Um, uh, the other uh, walling and stuff like that so you can see kind of behind. So you can have an idea what what a plane becomes. Right. Um, so I see. Here you can see that's the top of the fuel tank. This is part of the air handling system, this big plenum, uh, all the electrical lines. And then up here you can actually see the flight control cables. Yep. Those go from the cockpit all the way back to uh, the different flight services. The original So this was still fly by cable. After well delivered walk through the plane by Team Frilingus, we went around one more time this magnificent flying machine. Last stop was walking on the wings of this beautiful plane. Thank you for joining us at the 747 experience at the Delta Flight Museum. Don't forget to watch the other episodes of our visit. And also if you like this video click like, subscribe to our channel and ring the bell so you can receive notification of our new videos.